and any staff of teachers, faculty assistants to come up, and we're going to pray for you. All right, let's have these kids do a little blessing for us. I just want to say something real quick about our song that we're doing. It's from uh, Lauren Daigle. It's called You Say. And these awesome kids have been learning this for several weeks now. Um, it's a sign language song, so um, they've been working really hard on it. And we chose this song because because okay, it re reflects our message that we've been instilling in them every year and all year that they are um, who God says they are. And identity is so important, and as the kids go back to school and they might face challenges with their identity, with bullying or grades or new things or new friends, we just want them to know that God says they're great, they're awesome, and we want them to know that they can always listen to his voice in the midst of identity challenges. So here we go. Voices in my mind that say I'm not enough Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Just the sum of every high and every low Remind me once again just who I am Because I need to know
right, if we could get all the kids in school to come down and that need some prayer, if you're going back to school, just come on down and uh, we'd be glad to pray over you. How many of you are excited about going back to school? That's, sound like me. That's what I'd have said if you'd have asked me, I think. Silence is golden. The teachers, the students, hello. And how are you doing? Great possibilities here. This is my future grandbaby. You're going to call me Opa? Opa. Opa. And Oma. There's Oma. My goodness, that many of y'all going back to school? Lord have mercy. The world is getting ready to get a good, good dose of anointing because God's going to use all of you so mightily. You're going to carry the gospel into the schools. You're going to share it. You get to live it. You get to show it. And we're going to get in agreement with you and your parents and your teachers for the Lord to move mightily in school. I'm telling you, some of you are great witnesses. Some of you are the only ones people ever hear about God. So there's a great mission on each and every one of you. And I want to say this before we pray. Did you know that the disciples, the disciples, most of them were teenagers? Luke, the doctor, was the oldest. He was 22. And after that, they go to 19 and 18. When those young men were called into the gospel, they literally would have been today, if they were living today, they would have been like high school, just graduating school, and then God's calling them. That's where you're at with God. You're right on the verge of stepping out, boom, in your youth, because God loves youth. Can I get an amen? amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just release a protective anointing over our students, our children, the teachers, and I thank you for giving anointing to the parents, an anointing for them to keep their eyes open and their ears to what's going on in the school and to know what their children are being taught and to be alert by the Holy Spirit when something's not right. And we thank you, Father God. The things that are not right are being, they're just being critiqued out. And we thank you that righteousness is being engrafted back into our schools. We thank you that our kids understand the power and the anointing of God to move in their lives, to lead them and to guide them. Just the anointing of God's word as they speak it out of their mouth. You hear it, Lord, and you begin to confirm your word with them. We thank you that you will just relieve them from the temptations that will happen in the school. We thank you for keeping them from the evil that happens in school. And we just give you the praise, the glory, and the honor because we trust you that in these last days and in these evil times, you said for us not to be troubled. Don't let our hearts be troubled. You said all these things must come to pass before the end anyway. And so we thank you that we are part of a great move and revival of the Most High. And everyone said... Amen and amen. Praise God. God bless you kids and thank you. And you guys go study. <laughs> Woo, school, school, school. Well, I've got all the children in here and I'm just going to be honest. While I was getting prepared, it was like I, I didn't think about the children So, uh, as far as the preaching. So as we got going and I realized the kids are in here, I'm like, wow. Kids, I just pray that you get, get a hold of what I'm going to say today, okay? Y'all not mad, are you? I'm telling you, let me find my notes. I got them hanging around here somewhere. Well, God is good. I think I'd like to just start in Proverbs 4.20, but I want to do it with the passion. I want to use the passion version. This is pretty good. Amen. What I would like to talk to you guys about today, and the reason I'm going to Proverbs 4.20, is something you've heard me talk about for 40 years. The power of words, thoughts, and its purpose. Now listen, God took words, and he used words and thoughts so that you would be able to see him, know him, hear him, understand him. Not only that, you were created in the likeness and image of who he is, and he is the word. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word. It says, in the Word 
was with God and the word it was God and then it goes on in verse 12 to say and the word was made flesh who is that Jesus and Jesus the word of God took on human flesh hello and then he come and shows all of us in human flesh how the Spirit of God can dominate it rule it control it and let the Holy Spirit have rule and reign and unrighteousness be washed out of your life and by the blood of Jesus Christ and his power his righteousness comes into you and cleanses you it makes you whole again so once we understand that and we're walking in that and we know who we are and we understand another thing I want to say because I keep hearing it when I go to other places everybody's still saying Lord send the kingdom Lord send your kingdom Lord send your kingdom I have a word for you he did 2,000 years ago read your Bible can I get an amen the kingdom of God is here Luke 17 21 says it's within you and the word goes on to teach you in Colossians that the mystery of that word is Christ in you so my goodness when I got to prophesying this morning and pray I'm telling you knowing that there's so many of you in here that have the revelation knowledge of who you are in Christ that if two or three agree Listen, there's some of you in here have no clue what I'm talking about. I understand that, but a bunch of you do. But if I can catch two or three of you and you get in a serious agreement with the power of the words of deliverance, protection, and healing, God starts moving mightily. He moves mightily. It's so important to just learn to be obedient to what he says to you. I was in a conference last night and one of the singers spoke up as a testimony. I'll do it quicker than she did, but it was awesome. She said... <clears throat> She had her two daughters, and she was at an intersection. It was busy and going. And she said, she, she said, I know the voice of God. I just know it. She said, and the voice of God spoke to me and said, don't go. Sit still. And she said, I thought to myself, don't go. And the, and the kid said, Mom, the light's green. And she thought, but I really know I heard God say, don't move. And then all of a sudden, Oh, by the way, I left a part out. She said why she was sitting at the traffic light. She had a vision. And she saw a black SUV come through the intersection flying about 50 miles an hour. And she said, and then she heard a word. And the word said, don't move. And, and everything looked silly. And the kids were telling her to go. And then about five seconds after the light had turned green, here come that SUV. And she said it would have probably killed her two children where they weren't anyway I'm just saying I could sense the anointing when she was sharing that I could feel her spirit rejoicing in the power of God the body of Christ we got to wake up and quit thinking that that God wants us to struggle and hurt and be sick and a worm that is that is unbiblical that is ungodly as a matter of fact I'd say that is an extreme ungodly belief hello so in Proverbs 4.20, I don't know why I put my, my other eyeballs up. I folded them up and put them up. You have to come up with another solution for that one. All right. I'm going to enjoy this. I don't know about you. I love what the passion bird. You got something for me? Is that money? It is. Thank you. All right. Oh, okay. The Lord... The Lord said, please stand in agreement with me according to Matthew 18, 19 concerning. Scribble. All right. I agree. Let's go. Jesus said, leave the kids alone. Don't you know that such is the king? There's some people look at that and say, that little kid run up there. That little kid run up here happy in church. Run up to the preacher. Give the preacher a note and nobody freaked out got upset and the kid didn't even get a pop how about that all right here's some healing words for you listen carefully that's, that's what the scripture says healing words and listen carefully <laughs> listen carefully my dear child to everything I teach you you pay attention to all I gotta say now listen fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep in your spirit then you will unwrap my words and they will impart true life and radiant health into every core of your being. Anybody need a little extra health? I'm telling you, 
Just take some gospel pills every day. They dissolve and do well. Those little tiny, tiny gospel pills, they're awesome. Meditating, reading, praying. So above all, guard the affections of your heart. I'm going to read through 24. Guard the affections of your heart. They are, for they affect all that you are. And pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being. For from there flows well springs of life. I could stop right there. I got so much I'd just love to say, but I want to say one little thing. I can't stand it. See what he says? Listen to what he just said. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being. From there flows the well springs of life. If your innermost being does not have a wellspring and it has the revelation that you're a sinner, just a sinner, I'm going to tell you something. There's no such thing as a saved sinner. But that's like saying, I'm up and down. Well, no, wait a minute. Are you up or are you down? I'm up and down. But there's an up and there's a down. Which one are you? I'm up and down. Well, are you a sinner? Of course I am. But are you saved? Yes. Well, how are you saved in your sinning? Because I'm a saved sinner. Who taught you that? My church. Well, who's going to teach you different? The Word of God is going to literally be bigger than any church you've ever attended. You get in that Word and see what it says. Even though I'm a man standing up here preaching, how dare you just take my Word? Why don't you go check it out? Read it. Instead of walk out that door and say, what's the matter with that man? Is he crazy? Are you all right? All right, here we go. Now listen. The well springs of life. Avoid dishonest speech. You can say I'm crazy. But if you're a sinner, you're not going to avoid dishonest speech. But if you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and God's touched your heart, you have the ability by the Holy Ghost to do that. Hello. I was a sinner. I was a worm. That's what Paul said. The apostle Paul said was, was. And ignorance says am, am. Paul said, delivered. Ignorance says, not yet. Hello. What does the word teach us? That we are what? We are saved and we're being saved and what? We shall be saved. Which it uses the word delivered, but it means the same, it's the same word. We're delivered. And so avoid dishonest speech and pretentious words. Be free from using perverse words no matter what. Wow. I'm telling you, sometimes when I read the Passion, you don't have to preach. You just heard it and you just stand there and go, wow. Why? Because it's profound. And it's a revelation. He's speaking in the realm of revelation. This, this translation, I've cut my teeth on King James and there's people that think King James is the absolutely only true Bible in the whole world. And if you have anything else, it's wrong. I've met them. They even wear the ball caps, you know, King James 16, 11, and they stand looking mean, never smile, never happy. I, you know what I mean? They never are. King James only. And, and I actually, you're going to think I'm joking. I had a guy tell me one time that he uses the same Bible the Apostle Paul did. I, I wanted to tell him. <laughs> The Apostle Paul was writing it. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. But if the truth is this. You've got to, you, you, I'm telling you what I'm, I'm sensing today. I don't even, I don't know where it's coming from. Religion, a religious spirit. It's like there's a religious spirit going, don't proclaim the greatness of Christ and what he can do through his body. Stick with the old traditional church stuff. Give them a cute little message and pat them on the head and let them know they're sinners saved by grace and they can just go out the door and keep sinning by grace. No, I know I come out of a church, the denominational church. That's what we did. We, we smoke all week. We raise cane. We cuss. We fuss. We go to church. We put our cigarettes out in the sand thing at the door. Walk in after Sunday school. Sit down. And we listen to the preacher. If he's not through by 12, he's gone. And then we leave. And then we complain about the service. You think I'm joking. I don't mean just me. I mean, I've seen it. I watched it. I heard it. And here I am, just a brand new born again Christian, hungry for God in this great big church, asking all these questions. And everything's like that everything. I went in there and I said, look, I was just reading here. It says right here, look, 
from? He says, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus by his shed blood. Oh, no, you are not. Don't you know that you are a sinner? But don't you know that sinners can be cleaned and cleansed and made righteous by the power of the blood of Jesus? Why blood? Because blood has nature in it. It has life in nature. Where there's no blood, there's no life. Where there's no shedding of blood, there's no life. Blood. So when you receive the blood of Christ, you receive a divine nature. The Bible says now you're a partaker of a divine nature. And all of a sudden, now you have become the one that has the tongue as a pen of a ready writer. God has got you ready to walk through the earth and to speak his word, what he said, not what other preachers said or thought or what we even think, but literally quoting what God said. When I get up and rebuke something, I rebuke it like I'm him himself. Why? That's what we did in the military. Do you realize what an embassy is? It's a part of our nation in another nation. And did you know in that embassy, every rule applies? Every one of them. Now, I know when you hear about them under attack and being demolished, that's another thing. But an embassy is that. And the Bible says that you are ambassadors. And I don't know about you, but God is not sending a bunch of sinners and wicked people to preach the gospel. God sent the gospel to grab the wicked and the sinners clean them up and get them saved, get their mind changed, get their mind renewed, and all of a sudden, instead of GD and, and M this and M that and F this and blank that and D this, what are you doing? You're praising God laying hands on the sick. You're praying for people. You see a problem, you want to go over and help. You see somebody hurting, you want to give them some money, and you're like, how can you do all that if you don't have it? If you're born again and hungry to do that, God will put every bit of it in your hands to do it because he did it for Kathy and I. We got born again, $30,000 in debt, nine months behind on a house payment, three months behind on the car payment. Never been there, have you? Whew. And then I got born again. What a time to get saved. Losing everything I got, including my family. It's a good thing I got saved. And when I got born again, glory be to God. Whoo! All that changed. And I mean, in less than two years, I'm debt free. And God moving in my life because I learned the word. And y'all know me. I don't get up here and talk about tithes to the point that I use stuff to get your money. I, I want you to know to give by faith and trust God. I want you to hear his voice in you. I don't want to get up here and play a game and cry. Will you get some money? Man, we got faith. We believe God. I was telling my girlfriend, I said, when we first got started in God, we had to believe God for socks. We needed socks and couldn't buy them. And I'll never forget, Kathy said, let's use our faith. Let's just believe God for socks. And we did. And we were preaching. We were in the ministry. And guess what? A big old giant box of socks showed up. I found out where they come from. Are you in here, Ray McAwee? Your family sent me that. I think they were your socks and you didn't want them. They were great. I loved them. A box of socks. But see, when that box of sock came, what do you think it did to our faith? Socks. We needed a refrigerator. So we, we had a little one. It had two ice trays in it. That was the freezer. That's it. And so, I mean, this thing was made in like 1930. And so we're, we're, we're like, we need a refrigerator. We pray, we believe God. And we just believe in God. Lord, we, we just believe in you for it. And we just kept working and trying to pay our bills, continuing to get out of debt, trusting him. We always tithe. And we come home from church one Sunday, and there was eight $100 bills and a magnet on that refrigerator with a picture of a brand new refrigerator on it. And I heard Kathy scream. I said, what is it? She said, look. And I went running in there, and there's all the money. That might not sound like much money to you, but let me tell you something. In 1977, 800 bucks. <laughs> I don't know where that come from, but God sure blessed that angel. Mm. Can I get an amen? I know I can get one from you. Well, with doing that, there's a part of me that because of the kids, I'm, I'll just be quiet and not tell you, and I'll just do my own personal cutting where I'm going to cut it and you won't know it, so we'll be better off. Amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. 
and after we get through with some of this I'll just turn you guys loose on the world so you can go pray for the sick and you can just go out and witness and you can minister and if you're in a situation where you need spiritual help by maybe a physical healing something going on in your body the Word of God the Bible teaches us is medicine to our flesh I appreciate doctors I do I'm not against all that I'm not one of the preachers that thinks if you go to a doctor you do not have faith I've heard that I know that but I don't I'm not there I can I can go to a doctor if my bones sticking out of my arm I'm not gonna say bone get back in my arm I can say it but guess what that bone needs some attention so I have no problem going to where I can get a bone set or something but when I'm in a situation man can't help me and all he's got is a bunch of speculations and maybes pal I stick to this word it has delivered me through everything I've been through and it's going to deliver me from everything I've got to go through and when time's up you're gone like like a lady said this week if I live I live if I die I die but if I live I live in God and if I die I die in God so I'm here for him I'm here by him I am with him and in the body out of the body I'm present with him so we might be absent from one another, but we're not from him. Never, never absent from him. Can I get an amen? Whoo! This is going to be very interesting, I do believe. So, I know you're familiar with the King James and how it talks about there's no condemnation to those that walk in Christ Jesus. I really want you to listen to the Passion version of it. The Greek scholar of putting these words together is so amazing you get so much more revelation and so I want to read this you got it that's good oh living by the power of the Holy Ghost all right let's what the word says now the case is closed <laughs> there remains no accusing voice for condemnation against those that are joined in life union with Jesus case closed Oh, you're a worm, case closed. You're unrighteous. How dare you say you're righteous, case closed. I'm the righteousness of God. I wonder what's wrong with Larry Souls. We keep trying to correct him. He's saying all these crazy, powerful things. Doesn't he know that he's just nothing but a sinner and a worm? No. Unfortunately, he decided to do what a lot of people don't do. Crack that Bible open and read it himself. And he said, what? How come nobody's telling me this stuff? Have you not ever said that? Have you not ever said, have you not ever said under a message and thought to yourself, why isn't that being preached? How can that be 2,000 years old and we've never heard it? Well, that's the, that's the condition of the American church. It's not like that all over the world. I'm going to tell you something. This, this country is religious. And, but God's going to move in a revival and turn it into a believing Christian place, not religious. Jesus made it clear what religion does and he made it clear what traditions do they make the word of God of no effect people think the word religion is the Bible and Christianity and it's not religion is rules and laws and regulations and I can take you to the scripture that tells you do not bow your knee to rules and laws and regulations to the new moon to the holidays and so on <laughs> Hallelujah. And then he says this. There's no accusing voice, condemnation against those that are joined in life of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The anointed one for the law. Now, what's a law? Simple. A law is just something that works every time. That's what a law is. It works every time. Well, the law of the spirit of life, that's the word of God being heard. The law of the spirit in life flowing through the anointing of Jesus has, 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 past tense, liberated us. From what? Another law. Oh, but that other law works every time too. What happened? There was a law in the spirit that God used to supersede a law of the flesh. And if you live in the flesh, the law is death. If you live in the spirit, the law is life. And then he says this, liberated us from the law of sin and death, for God achieved what the law was unable to accomplish. Listen to this, because the law was limited 
by the weakness of human, human flesh. Weak. But yet God still sent his own son. Here it is. It's right here in the Bible. You don't have to go down the street and cuss me out for saying it. You can go down the street and cut this out of the Bible so it won't be in there with your scissors. Hello. People do it. He says this. Yet God sent his son in human form. God sent Jesus. He's telling you Jesus was not a human. Jesus was God. And God said, I stepped into your human flesh. And he did it by his son. Because they're one. And he says, I come in human form to identify with human weakness. God clothed with humanity. God's son gave his body to be the sin offering that God could once and for all condemn the guilt and the power of sin. Now, are you hearing? Once and for all, then when that's done, look what it did. It, it does, it, oh my God. It condemned the guilt and the power of sin. So now every righteous requirement of the law, it can be fulfilled through the anointed one, Jesus Christ, living his life in us. And we are free to live. Not according now to our flesh. Paul said, with my flesh, I serve sin. You lean to your flesh, the desires, your five senses, it'll lead you into sin. You lead to the spirit, your sixth sense, faith, it keeps you away from going wrong with your five senses. See, you, you grew up learning to trust them. You sit there and tell me you don't have faith, but you're sitting in that chair. Why? Because you've got so much faith, you believe it'll hold you up. Some of you don't even believe that. I'm surprised the chair didn't collapse. But nevertheless, it's amazing how we live not realizing a lot of it's faith. It is. When you were a kid and your daddy said, when I come home, I'm going to bring you an ice cream. What did you tell everybody all day? Baby, I got an ice cream coming. How do you know? He said so. And you believed him. And the difference between God and your daddy is if he told you that, he's definitely bringing an ice cream. He's not going to say, I forgot. I got busy. I worked over. <laughs> so he says this. We are free to live, but not according to our flesh, but by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. Who, who, listen to this. Those who are motivated by flesh, they only pursue the benefits for themselves. But those that live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit, they are what? Motivated to pursue spiritual what? Ooh. See, I love spiritual realities. I, I, I understand we all love to watch and see signs, wonders, and miracles. I, I'm not going to knock it. I love it. But it's really sad when that's kind of like that's it. Let's go to another meeting next weekend where they're doing signs, wonders. I love to watch all this stuff. The thing is, is be doing it, not to be watching it. It's okay to watch it so you can see how to do it. But if you've been to more than two or three services and you've seen how they minister to the sick, you ought to be able to go out that door and do it. That's, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, well, how about a little bit more on the job training here and show us what to do? I'll tell you what happened to me. I, went, I, I started going to a Word of Faith church in Gaffney. And actually right at Spartan, where the big old peach tank is on 85. That building beside it is a music store. That was our home church. Mike Little John was pastoring the children. Don Horton was pastor of the church. And my wife and I and two kids, we come pulling up in there and we were ready for some word. And boy, they had it. We got turned on. I couldn't believe a Baptist preacher could preach like that, had revelation like that, spoke in tongues, moved in the gifts of the Spirit. He started laying hands on people and things, people that I knew. I took people with me. I, at one time, I had over 35 people driving with me there as a matter of fact when we started the church in Rock Hill the people that was going there followed me to Rock Hill anyway <laughs> hey so what happened is I left church and went to work like we all do I got up Monday morning got dressed I'm gonna go hang iron all day long I loved it and I get stuck on a crane and the crane gets bogged down on a, on a 40 ton motor so there's nothing to do for a few days because they got to work on the motor. I have nothing to do. So I start reading a book by Smith Wigglesworth and the next thing I know, the power of God hit me 
and a whistle blew and I climbed up on top of the crane and for the first time in my life never spoke in front of a group of people I just screamed listen to this same thing I read in the book and then I couldn't remember what I read and all I could think of was Mark 11 23 and 24 and I preached it and I related it to uh, 1 Corinthians where he's talking about being born again and I related how faith works the same way you say it with your mouth you believe it in your heart boom man about almost a hundred got born again that day and it just simply began nobody showed me no one told me I sat in church and watched my pastor and when I got out there I would walk up to people on the job and just be talking if they said something and this happened all the time guy opened his bag one day and he said look my wife gave me a note and she said I don't even want you to come home he said I didn't even know anything was wrong and he's crying and boohooing I, I said let's pray and I grabbed that note and I crunched it and I prayed with him and I asked God to bless him and open her eyes and restore their relationship and I'm not kidding you it was the next morning he looked me up on the job come to the crane he said I don't know what happened I can't explain how it happened but when I got home yesterday she was crying repenting and he said everything is working out we've got things turning around thank you for your prayers well that jars my faith a lot when I do something and I hear something and so I got a little more wilder and I remember walking by a ditch a guy with a pick digging and he was crying and I said hey are you okay and before I could finish saying it I was in the ditch with him and and I just ministered Christ to him laid hands on him he started laughing he accepted Christ he got born. I could just keep going with stories after stories and it's just me bumping into people I remember what happened in church and I just did what happened in church outside. What God wants is what's going on in here to go on out there. And whatever you get when you come to church, you're supposed to take it out and give it like the little boy did with his two fish and his five loaves. Give it. And God will use it if you'll give it. He'll multiply it and he'll feed the multitudes because the fish and the bread were symbolic to salvation in the word. Jesus is the bread of life. Mm. So, but those that live by impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue spiritual realities for the mind of the flesh is death, but the mindset controlled by the spirit of life is peace. Now I'm going to read just a little bit more of this. In fact, the mindset focus on the flesh will fight against God's plan and refuses ugh, to submit to his direct you want to know why you're not doing anything with God that's easy it's your flesh if God's told you to do something and your flesh says no that'll take me away from my TV time it's your flesh you don't need no TV all it is is tell a vision why you want to sit there and let somebody lie to you about a vision I don't know why TV is so important hallelujah well because it cannot for no matter how hard they try, God finds no pleasure with those that are controlled with their flesh. And listen, I'll show you what religion does. I don't want to go to the subject, once saved, always saved, as all of us Baptists know it, but I want to say something to you. That's a very, very poor teaching. To once saved, always saved. Well, that's fine. Yeah, I'm saved and I'm going to stay saved. But here's what it doesn't mean. Once you're saved, you can continue to live as though you're not. Because once you are saved, you are saved. But Paul says when you're saved, you've been delivered. So if I'm delivered from something, I've been saved from it, not for it. But when the Spirit of Christ empowers your life, now this is word, this isn't Larry Souls. This is Jesus Christ talking to us. Whew. When the Spirit of Christ empowers your life, you are not dominated by flesh, but by the Spirit. The Word of God, Spirit and Word of God are inseparable. And I get tickled at people that say, and it says, and when the Spirit moved, well, it says, and God said, and the Spirit moved. Not joined to the spirit of the anointed one. And if you are not joined to the spirit of the anointed one, you're just not of him. If you're joined to the righteousness of God and you're saying you're a worm, you're saying he is. 
because he said when you come to me and God you and God and I have now become one and now the righteous God and the righteous Jesus and the worm you are now one wormy God no he is not a wormy God he has no worms there's no worms in heaven and I got another word there's no worms in the kingdom of God how are you hearing me where is the kingdom of God it's inside of you Luke 17 21 when did the kingdom of God come on the day of Pentecost Jesus said so are you guys all right I know what you're doing see religion teaches us the kingdom coming is about buildings and land and it's not the Bible says the kingdom of God will not even come with an observation you can't see it with the natural eye it's in you it's how you live without God I cussed I raised hell I did drugs I didn't care and I come to Christ and I repented of all my sins and all of a sudden I quit doing all that stuff even though everybody at church that I went to says oh well, it's okay to do that it's okay to do that I'm a deacon in my church here let's smoke some pot I, I, I do it. And I'm like hey whoa 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 I'm reading things and I'm getting into things and I'm talking to the church to help me and even when I went to the pastor and I said pastor I was reading about the baptism of the Holy Ghost Whoo! tell me about it oh it's passed away it's no more that's not for today I thought you know I've heard so much is not for today I need to find out what's not so I can rip it out and I don't have to carry such a big book and I think if I ripped out what they said is not for today, I'd only need maybe a page. Like maybe John 3, 16. Are y'all all right? Well, hey church. <laughs> and it is good news, hallelujah. And I'm loving it. Because he makes it so clear that now every righteous requirement of the law is fulfilled through the anointed one living his life in us. That's the scripture I got highlighted in yellow. Living his. Now you hear the difference? Here's what we do. Let me tell you how I'm living. No. He wants to live and move and have your being. So when I wake up in the morning, sure, I have a will to do. I go to the bathroom, do everything I do. That's my will. I, go, I got that will. But the will of God is to do things that are superseding my normal activities of feeding myself and taking care of myself and in that I can get direction from God the do's and don'ts to make it better can I get an amen he told me when I was 85 pounds heavier if I didn't throw that medicine in the trash I would die I threw it in the trash and praise God I'm still here of course I went and told the doctor I was going to do it he said if you throw that medicine in the trash your heart will stop well it didn't it's still pumping any way it wants to I don't care well I'm going to stop reading and I want to give you this and let you we got children there's so much I could want to say and do but listen God did put his thoughts he put his plan he put everything that he has of himself in words words they're so powerful and we use them all the time and sometimes they're just lies or, or cheap. I mean, the whole world's just all kinds of words. Everything's words, 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 words. But the Word of God is the most supreme, powerful words of all. Because when faith is released with God's Word, then God Himself performs it. He said, if you'll go do what I say, I will confirm my Word. You can read it in Mark 16. I will confirm my Word, how? With signs following. I didn't even understand all that when I began to do power preaching and doing all that stuff. The next thing I know, miracles just started happening. I didn't know they were going to happen. I really didn't. It wasn't like, uh, there's going to be miracles today, everybody. Are y'all ready? I, I just went out there and would just meet people and pray for them and stuff. And just miracles would happen. And you know, things happen to people that are not physical. And there's a man that I've told this a billion times, but Roy Broynton, he came up to me and he was scared he said I can't eat. he's a big man he said I can't explain it but I'm afraid I'm gonna die I'm scared to leave the house to drive my car I've never been like this in my life but it's been hitting me for a while and he said man I, I, whoa, 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 what's wrong with me like well I just slapped him on the head real fast I mean the spirit of God rose up in me I said in the name of Jesus you be delivered and he hit the dirt 
and two guys picked me up and slammed me against the crane and drew their fists back. We saw you hit him. I said, oh, no, I was praying for him. Oh, you hit him. And then he started screaming at them, let him go, let him go. And he got up laughing. And he said, what did you do to me? I said, what? And they're holding my arms. He said, what did you do to me? I said, I just prayed for you. He said, well, I know one thing. For some reason, I'm happy. And he started laughing. And he said, whoa, I, you know, I don't even have that fear. And he said, let him go. And them boys let me go like that. And they said, you okay? He said, man, I'm fine. He prayed for me. It freaked me out. I didn't sit there. I mean, I'm telling you. When the vice president of, Power, of Duke Energy came, and I thought he'd come to fire me because I was preaching on the job, and he takes me way out into a field in a map shack privately, then opens the door and steps out and looks around to make sure nobody's there. I'm going, what kind of firing is this? They don't seriously fire me. And he said, I want to get it straight. Now, you the guy that's been preaching? I said, yes, sir. Are you the guy that prayed for the guy that fell 80 feet? And he got healed? Yes, sir. Are you the guy that prayed for that deaf welder? Yes, sir. Are you, you are that guy? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, everybody's telling me I need to come see you. I said, do what? I'm actually, I've heard he's looking for me. But they told me he was going to fire me personally. It was the other way around. He was looking for a preacher that believed God. And he didn't care if he had long hair and denim and was dirty. He just knew God was moving on that job, heard about it, got a bad report for his heart and got in his car and come straight to us. And the next thing you know, I mean, I about knocked him out of that map shack. I said, you mean all you want me to do, pray for your heart? And he said, that's all. <laughs> Bam. If I had it to do over, I would have probably said, give me your hand or maybe gently put my, I about knocked him out. But let me tell you something, Spirit of God, heal that old rascal. But I, I, don't, I don't know what the end results, how they're going to always turn out. I just know God is good and he's a healer and he'll deliver you. And I just go for it. And I, this isn't much on the job training for you. But I'm just, a lot of this stuff in Christianity, if you don't just go for it, you'll never know. Just try it. Just do it. I'll give you this. Some of you are going to have somebody this week say something about their life that it'll open the door that they'll need prayer. They'll say something. You know, my kid's sick. My wife's got COVID. There's something that happen. There's your chance right there. You say, oh, I heard what you said there. Listen, I want to pray with you. You don't preach to them. I want to pray with you. I want to just believe God for their healing with you. You know, what's her name? Helen. Well, then let's pray for it. Well, Father, we just thank you that Helen is delivered from COVID and she is not going to have that wipe her out. We refuse it. We speak life over her. And, you know, no complications when it's over. Words. Now, people say, oh, you're crazy. Well, let me show you what people think is not crazy. What's this? How are you doing? I'm uh, not so good. I'm doing pretty bad. Hey, if it wasn't bad luck, wouldn't have no luck. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, when I get up in the morning, bad stuff, it tracks me like a magnet on a refrigerator. Yeah. Nobody will think you're crazy talking like that. Nobody. If I, if I go get in a car, four or five cars will come to it and hit it. As fast as soon as I get in it, there's a wreck. Everything I'll touch. If I plant something, it won't grow. I don't have a green thumb. I got a brown thumb. It dies. Nobody says anything about that. I mean, they don't. But you come in and you say, whoo, I'm the head, not the tail, baby. I'm above and I'm never beneath. I'm healed and bled. That, wait a minute. Now hold it. Now you're going crazy. You are losing your mind. You got it. Not crazy. I have lost. I have lost what was destroying me. I lost what was sending me to hell. I lost what kept me sick. I lost what kept me in poverty. I lost what kept me from being a good husband and a good daddy. I lost it. And it was my old natured mind. And what did I do? I took the washing and the water of God's word and I began to scrub that old thing. It knocked all my hair out. And I'm telling you, glory to God, you get this thing down inside of you, that's all it wants to come out of you. Hey! Stand up and give God a big old praise. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you today. Most high, 
I thank you today that they get a revelation that your words, your thoughts, your purpose have been put into words and this word is in this book and when it gets in their being that they will agree with it, that they will say what you said and they will act like you said act. They will lay hands on the sick. They will curse the enemy, pray for the nations and we will release the angels and the anointing of God all over the earth for the greatest revival we're ever about to see. Hey, church, I'm telling you, all this bad news is going on. Jesus told you in the word, today is going to happen. He said there'll be wars and there'll be rumors of wars. There'll be earthquakes. There'll be all kinds of destruction. He lets you know the weather's going to go nuts. He said, but don't let your heart be troubled. He said the end's not yet. He said those were the signs of what's coming. Not disaster for the church. It's disaster for the unrighteous. That's why I'm hungry to get as many of them born again as I can. I don't want all them old Larry Souls to go to hell. I want to help them. Come on, let's go to heaven, baby. But there's more than going to heaven. It's living in heaven while you're alive. And that's what I do. In the body, out of the body. Whenever they do the, if any of you are still alive when I go to heaven, if they have a home going service, if they do, I want you to stop and remember one thing. In the body or out of the body, I'm in just as present with God standing here in front of you as if you were having a celebration service of me being in heaven. And you would be thinking, well, poor old feller dead. And I'd be like, rich, prosperous in God is living forever. And the Bible says, even though you die, you are not dead, you shall live. Are you all right? Say this with me. Say, Father God, I thank you for the blood of Jesus. And right now, I repent of every sin that would be against you. And I ask you, forgive me. And I receive that forgiveness now. I thank you for the blood of Jesus that makes me whole. And right now, I am forgiven. I am strengthened. I'm made whole by the blood of the Lamb. Whew. Hey, and then what does it say in Revelation? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And what else? Yes! Your word or your testimony. And that's what every one of you have that you can take out to somebody out there. The word of your testimony. That's what I did. I just shared people the word of mine. And it works. Thank you, Father. Bless these people. May your grace shine on their face. May they win souls like never before. And may our schools be infected with the righteousness of God through our children. Let the anointing be on their lives. Amen and amen. God bless you. Go do the word. And do it. <laughs>